Hey you guys, welcome back to Ruth and Ruby. Today is an exciting video because it's something that you guys have been asking me for for quite a while, especially on the last video. All of the comments were like, yes, please do a resin tutorial. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna take a couple of projects and use our amazing casting resin and you can find this on our website at ruthandruby.com. So I've got several tips for you today, but the biggest thing, the number one tip that I can share with you is just try it. Go pick yourself up some from the website and grab yourself some paint while you're there. We just got a huge Dixie Belle shipment in, so all of that's gonna be restocked. But that's my biggest tip is you just have to try it. So try it, let me know, come back to the video if you have more questions. I will be glad to do another video for you and go in even, even further detail if that's what you need. So just go ahead and grab yourself some, give it a shot and let me know what you think. Okay, so for your castings to become hard, you need equal parts of part A and part B. So part A is the clear that I'm pouring here, and then the yellow part there is part B. So I did equal parts of 20 milliliters of each one. So then we pour them separately so that we make sure that everything is exactly measured perfectly, and then pour them together, and we're gonna stir it up. So you can see how it starts to turn a little bit milky white right here. So that's the chemical reaction happening. That's exactly what we need to happen. So you see how that yellow color kind of disappeared? And so it's turning that milky white color and as we stir, it's going to kind of turn back to a clear. When it gets back to the clear, that's how you know it's ready to pour. So this takes about 30, maybe 45 seconds. And then you're going to be ready to pour it into your resin, into your mold is what I mean. Um, so it takes about 10 minutes to harden into your mold. So a couple of tips I want to share in case you are like, okay, well, it's been 10 minutes and this is still like a gooey mess. I did something wrong. Not necessarily. Sometimes environment can change the, the way that it cures. So it is an approximate 10 minute, but I'll be honest with you. My studio is extremely humid and it almost rarely cures in exactly 10 minutes. It usually takes closer to 15. So if you find that your stuff is like, you know, it's gooey and you're like, it's not hardening like it's supposed to, I have popped it in the freezer as well. And that helps big time. So that will cause the, the curing process to speed up a little bit. And I don't do that much. I usually just put it to the side and work on something else while it does what it's got to do. But if I'm in a hurry and I'm like, okay, why is this, you know, taking forever? A lot of times the humidity can be a factor. So I'll pop it in the freezer and, you know, it comes out perfectly hard just as if it had sat in a not so humid room. <laughs> I like to use my little silicone stick to smooth it around, especially in some of the ornate details like the, you know, the oval one. Um, that's hard to sometimes get into, so I'll use it to, to get in there. And the resin, when it hardens on this stick, it peels right off, so you can just use this thing over and over again. And I'll try to find these. I've had these for a while, but this exact set may not be, ab be available, but I'll try to find something very similar to link for you on Amazon. Okay, so I'm just going to let this uh, sit here and do its thing because I want you to be able to see the change when it happens. And so just enjoy it. It's pretty satisfying. so when they're fully cured they pop right out so I'm gonna show you these two are fully cured they're gonna pop right out but the one on the right is still a little bit gooey but I'm gonna go ahead and pop it out because I want to show you so you see it just comes right out nice and clean and you are ready to use it for any kind of project whether you want to paint it or leave it as is so I'm gonna pop this one out and then I want to show you how you can still um, you know if you want to put these on a rounded surface or something so even though it's cured and it pops right out it's still a little bit warm to the touch and it's very flexible right now. Now, another four or five minutes, it's going to be pretty hard. So this is a great time for you to glue it to a project if you want it to be on a rounded surface. So you can see how it's still flexible. So what I would do is tape it onto whatever surface I'm going to put it on. I would put the glue on it and then put it, you know, form it to that and then hold it down with some painter's tape. So this one here. 
you can see this one was just a little bit thin anyway because I didn't have quite enough resin but that's okay we're still gonna be able to use it so right here at the top it's a little bit more cured it's a little more hard but you can see as I start to pull out see how flexible it is so it is just on the verge of not quite cured but when we get down here to the bottom you can see how that's still kind of it's almost a little bit gooey so that's what I'm talking about. If you're finding that you're having that issue, you can pop it into the freezer. One more thing. We've got a discount code for you that's good for one week. We very rarely discount our DIY supplies, but I really want you guys to try it if you haven't tried it before. So this code is valid for one week until next Friday and it's the perfect time. Go get you some. Okay, so I'm gonna take um, a little piece of my Fairy Mary transfer and I'm creasing it on the inside so I can know where to cut. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't want any of my transfer to stick to the outer portion of the frame because I may not be able to get it off out of that little detail. So I'm just going to put it on there and I cannot find any of my IOD transfer sticks so this little popsicle stick is going to do the trick for today. So next up is one of my favorite things. You guys know I've been using this bronze wax like crazy. I cannot get enough of it so if you haven't gotten any you need to go get you some at ruthandruby.com. So I'm going right over the casting. So just no paint, no nothing, straight on with the gilding wax, and you can see how well it sticks. It just adheres right to it. I don't have to do anything else to it. This gilding wax is an oil-based product, so that's why it sticks so well without a paint-based coat first. Now I'm just wiping back the excess from the center part, and look how pretty she is. So now I'm going to put it on my little book stack. Okay, so this is some, I don't even know what this kind of ribbon is called, but I got it from the Dollar Tree. Um, my footage disappeared. I don't know. My camera is acting wonky today. So I cut it in half and folded it over my twine, and then I'm going to attempt to use my hot glue gun, but it's not hot enough. So I said, I don't have time to wait for this, and I grabbed the super glue instead. So my little blue silicone mat here is going to make sure that that doesn't, um, any, no glue will seep and stick to my book pages because I want this to be, you know, free and kind of like float around. So these silicone mats, if you don't have any of these, go check them out on Amazon. I'll leave a link below. This thing has like changed, I don't know, my crafting career, I guess, <laughs> um, it's, it's really made a world of difference in the cleanup and just the ease of certain things is what I'm saying. So I'm taking this greenery here. This is a garland that I bought at Hobby Lobby a long time ago. I've been pulling pieces off of it forever and a day and still have plenty. So I just trim it down to fit and you can see my little tag there is just, it's, you know, free flowing and I don't, I just don't want it to be stuck to the book. So um, I'm going to put a little bit of glue underneath there to hold the greenery in place because I don't want it to fall out. But other than that, I'm going to leave the tag and just let it flow. All right, here we go. What do you think of this finished project? So this is free books that I got from an estate sale and with our frames mold and a little piece of a transfer. So you cannot get much more inexpensive than that. And I'm going to make a bunch of these for an upcoming festival. And I'm thinking about retailing them at about $14.99. What do you think? All right, next up is another book stack. And I'm going to show you a little something different. This is actually the first time that I have done decoupage on books like this. So this is a portion of the Recycled Treasures Fall Botanical Project Blocks is what this one's called. I'll leave a link below, but Fall Botanical Project Blocks. And I am giving the spines of the book a good hefty coat of DIY liquid patina because they still have some paper on them from the backing. So I want to make sure that they get really good and saturated so that my decoupage paper can adhere. So what little bit of excess I have, I'm taking and putting on the back of the paper. And this is the magic. If you haven't tried spritzing your decoupage paper, absolutely try it because if you're getting a lot of wrinkles or you know creases things that you're like well I don't really that's not just right spritzing it with water has made a world of difference for me so try it and let me know come back to and you know let me know in the comments if it worked for you so I'm giving it another coat of the DIYs liquid patina on top and then I'm gonna set it to the side and let it dry also I want to point out my little clamp here if you wonder what's going on there that clamp is just putting some pressure or tension on my books to hold it together 
All right, so I'm going to show you, since this is a resin tutorial, I'm going to show you one more time what's going on here. So we have mixed equal parts of A and B. That's it. Just so super simple. Equal parts and stirring it together. And you can see my color changing here that I talked about in the very beginning. And I'm pouring it into my little pumpkin mold. So, Hello Pumpkin, if you don't have this one, go to RuthandRuby.com and grab it before it's gone because it's another one that's a limited edition, so once they are gone, they are gone, and I won't get any more. So, I'm using my silicone stick to just make sure that I'm getting it in the little pumpkin stem and all the grooves, and you'll see later on here that I actually under poured just a little bit. Um, I save it in the end, so it's totally fine, but I just wanted you to, to notice there. So I'm taking sandpaper and sanding off the edge of the decoupage paper so that it, I can get a smooth, clean edge. And we're popping out that mold, or that casting, I guess you should technically call it, um, and just making sure that it's going to fit there the way I want it. Okay, this color orange is a custom mix of honky tonk red and kernel mustard by dixie bell paint i really really love this color i love terracotta as well but this color is just a beautiful burnt orange and then i'm using pine cone for the pumpkin stem that is the perfect pumpkin stem color and i'm using evergreen right here on the leaves now this green is a little bit bright but you're going to see here in a minute that it really tones down because that orange was not dry yet so it kind of mixed in and turned the perfect shade of green, kind of an olivey green. All right, so I'm using that same super glue. I will link it in the comments down below or in the description below. All right, I'm going to give it some pressure in a couple of different places to make sure that it is adhered well. All right, I'm using my favorite wax again, my bronze gilding wax. And I did a no-no. I did not put anything on the pumpkin first. So you're going to see here in just a second. I have a really hard time wiping any of this back, which I love my bronze wax, but this was too much. So I'm going to show you how I save that by adding just a little bit more of the orange paint on top. Um, actually, I add a little bit more of the green as well. Okay, my favorite part of making these book stacks is when I get to take the clamp off. And you can see it stays together perfectly. And we are going to finish this off with a little bit of Spanish moss down at the bottom. Um, you know, I told you earlier that I under poured in that mold just a little bit. Not that it looks bad. And if I didn't tell you, you may not even necessarily notice. But I think this was just the perfect finishing touch. I'm hot gluing it on just along the bottom. And then I'm trimming off just a little bit so that way we can make sure that everything sits nice and flat. All right, you guys, what do you think about this one? I think this might be my one of my favorite projects I've made in a while. I really love how that turned out, and it looks so cute sitting on top of this little mini candle ring, which you can also find at RuthandRuby.com. Thanks for watching.